Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MMA Island. Ben the Bane Davis here with the number five ranked Bellator heavyweight Tyrell Fortune, 12 and 2. Tyrell, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Just training, getting ready for this fight. What has these last couple weeks been looking like? I mean, coming into this fight, do you change up the training camp or is it just business as usual uh, in these final weeks? Business as usual, man. Just sharpening up everything, getting it, uh, doing the last little touches in, on cardio and game plan. And that's, that's pretty much about it. You know, it's always a pretty much the same thing for me. For sure. Now, last time out, you got a first round KO. How good was it to get back inside the win column? It's, it's detrimental to your career. It's important, very important to, uh, you know, get back in that win column, especially when you're trying to push, push for the championship. You got to be, you got to win fights. Do you feel that at the split decision to Linton, that should have gone your way? Nope. If I don't get the finish, it's not, it's no longer in my hands. You know, sure. then, uh, then, you know, that's how I look at it. I can't complain about what a judge saw and how they, how they scored the fight. That's what they saw when they were sitting there on that seat. So if um, I didn't finish you or do it and do enough to, in that person's eyes, then that's his judgment. Fair. Now let's talk about this Daniel James matchup. He's on a three fight finish streak. He is 40 years uh, old, but he's the hometown guy. How does it feel to go into enemy territory against Daniel James? Well, it's all a cage. Don't matter. No one else is getting in that cage. Him, so <laughs> Chicago uh, can't protect him uh, yeah. that night. Yeah. <laughs> and so it don't, it don't matter where we fight that, you know, do you like this matchup stylistically? Do you think that this is uh, pretty advantageous for you? Yeah, I think um, every matchup is advantageous for me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, no. So, yeah, I, I always look forward. That's why I, I just love getting in there and fighting. And uh, that's why I love just testing myself, seeing what, what skill sets, what will present, you know, different challenges. Sure. Now, this is your second fight this year. The last couple of years, you've been sort of a three fight per year guy. Do you like more activity or do you like maybe focusing in on the fights more so than getting in the cage as much as possible? I like more activity. I yeah. can. I don't know what to do with myself when I don't have fights lined up. <laughs> it's uh, I get very bored. And um, <laughs> if it's not if it's not the winter time, I want to fight. If it's the winter time, I'll take a little bit more time because I'll, I'll snowboard. But beside that, put me, I'm, I mean, even snowboarding comes second to fighting. So I just, Straight all up. I want to do is fight, you know? So that that's that's all I do every day is train and work out. So I, there's never any excuses for me not to fight. I don't turn down fights. I'm willing to fight anyone. That, you oh, know, that's why I'm fighting yeah. Daniel James. You know, this guy hasn't fought in Bellator since I just found out since 2014. So it's not, um, you know, it's not like uh, I'm having so much to gain from, from being a guy like this, uh, he's not ranked. I'm I'm ranked fifth. I have everything to lose. He has everything to gain. And that's such an interesting position to be in, right? The fifth ranked guy fighting someone that's coming back into the organization. That's a lot of risk to take. Uh, and that's just because you're a, a fight anyone, anywhere type individual. Yeah, 100%. I don't, I never, I don't care who my opponent is. Do you have um, within the next 12 to 18 months dreams of getting that Bellator heavyweight strap? Do you want to fight for that title? Yeah, yeah, I do. I really do. I mean, it's just uh, it's more politics in that game than just me wanting to fight for that title. You know right. What I mean, guys got to guys got to show up. The other other guy has to show up, sign the contract and uh, step in that cage. And I know that now being in the game longer, I've realized that takes more than me just saying calling the guys out. You know, that's why almost like I think it's kind of corny to call guys out. Now. You know, how many times have you seen a guy call somebody out and they get that fight? It right. Very few happens. times. It doesn't materialize. Right. It yeah. doesn't happen. So <laughs> like asking, well, who do you want to fight next? Uh, whoever wants to sign the contract, you know, right. like I've asked to fight. The only guy who Linton was the only guy who was in front of me who w took the fight right away to fight me. You know what I mean? But so it's, it's, it's so much politics that go into getting guys to sign that contract and then step into the cage. Right. Now, Outside of the cage, right? You said that you do not really have that many hobbies, but I know that you're a big anime guy. The new tattoo uh, among Gekyo Sharingan, it's Sasuke's, I believe, when he was like in the eternal form. Tell me yeah, about so, tell me about getting that tattoo. What was the uh, decision process looking like for that? Um, I'm a huge anime guy. Um, I know a lot of people don't probably see that in me, but uh, no, I, I'm a huge <laughs> an, an, anime guy. Um, and Sasuke was one of my favorite characters. I thought that their eye paralysis was very dope. And um, I've always admired um, eyeball tattoos. And so I, knowing that I wanted one and then um, just that idea came into my head literally like three weeks before I was going out there. I was like, oh man, I should change this into a, 
I can throw some anime <laughs> in this because it's an eyeball, you know, because I was going to get an eye anyway. And so, um, no, just it was just, man, having that, opp- having that, you know, pop into my head and being such an anime fan. And the ta- my tattoo artist is so dope that yeah. it just the, we talked about it for a little bit. He looked up a couple pictures and got to drawing. And, you know, I told him, you know, at first he was going to make it very cartoonish. And I was like, nah, I need it to look like a real eye. I want some grizzly. Yeah, some brutal yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need it to look like a real eye being tore out of my arm. You know what I mean? And he was like, oh, OK. He's like, yeah, so not so much cartoonish, but make it real. But then the, the whole anime, you know, the, the shouting gun going into it i think was a good uh, element that makes it you know different than just any regular eyeball that everybody has so you're pretty happy with how it came out oh i think as far other than my grandma that's my favorite tattoo i love it talking about one of the other tattoos you got the arizona combat sports obviously the the homage to that tell me about that gym this year because they've been lighting it up uh in in every place from amateur mma in arizona to the biggest stages mm-hmm. what's the az combat sports experience been like in 2022 um man we we have we, our gym, as far as like members, we don't have many like professional fighters there at the gym, but we have a lot of members who are very interested in getting into the, the fight game. And so um, it's, a, it's very interesting to see how a person with a regular job transitions into becoming a mixed martial artist. And I think that's that that's been kind of like a real amazing thing to watch people who have don't come from any athletic backgrounds or any sport at all. And they come in there and they, they, they work out for two, three years and they, you know, they see me in their training and they're like, man, I, I think I want to do this. And we're like, oh, are you, are you sure? Are you sure about that? Yeah. 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 You're like, this, it's, it's cool when it's another member, but it's different when it's another guy who's training to, to, to beat you up. And, and just to see their growth and, and development in that is amazing. I think just to be a part of their, their little, their little journey also, you know, so I think it's, it's really cool. I mean, like Trevor to me is like a, my, it's like my best friend, you know, and um, me and him have a, a really cl- close relationship. So I love that gym. Is, that means a lot to me. That's why I was I, I felt so comfortable getting them getting that tattoo because uh, it's like a second home for me. Completely. Now, when you transitioned to MMA, did you think that at one point in time you would kind of be inspiring these regular people who go into a mixed martial arts gym and they see you working and they go, man, Tyrell's crushing. And I, I look up to him and I want to keep training right because of him. Did you ever think that would happen? No, I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't focus on on that type of stuff. You know, I got sure. I'm, I got another guy trying to beat me up. So <laughs> for, for, I, I, I do enjoy I like I've always loved coaching and helping people. And so that's where I get that the fulfillment from. But um, no, I don't I don't try to because I don't think uh, fighting isn't for everybody. You know, everybody's right. not built to step in there and take that risk. And um, and and I think that's that's the main thing I look for. With, and I tell coach, like, do they have the mental for this game? Because that that part is so much more than being physically fit to go out there and throw punches. And you have to be willing to take a punch and go through when somebody's kicking your ass, kicking your leg out and being able to tough it out and still find a way to win, still believe in yourself to be able to pull out a win. So I don't honestly, I don't push people into to trying to get into fights. I think I, I actually push people away from it. But these members are they're fucking nuts. They they want to get in there and do it. So I'm like, All right, let's do it. Let's, yeah, right. You know? At some point, you can't deny them. Right, exactly. So no, I think you know. Even now, we have we have a heavyweight that Leon that I am actually really excited to see. And I think you know he's a f- ex football player, and now coming in MMA. And we've been working with him for the last year or two years now. And he in these last six months, he's been. And so consistent. I mean, every day, four hours a day, his ass wow. is in the gym doing whatever we say. We we tell him to do a hundred right hands on the back. He goes, I do two. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he do, so now I think for him, it's just like, you know, pushing him into the sparring, getting him into that. Okay. Now let's see if you can mentally take this full contact and, and, and really still be here. Do you, you know what I mean? And that's always, I think the challenge, can you spar two, three times a week? and still feel confident and come back into the gym. And that's usually where you start to see people fade away. Sure. Now, talking about that beginner mindset, you've almost championed that uh, and, and always saying that you're, you're trying to stay in that day one type, right? Always learning, always building. What are some of the biggest things in 2022 do you think that you've worked on or, or sharpened your skills in? Boxing, really. Trevor is really, uh, really focused on my hands and and getting the boxing better and, and just sharpening the skills uh, with that. And I've actually only had more opportunities with professional boxers in Arizona 
to to get there because the MMA guys around my weight class in Arizona don't don't really work out with me. So mm-hmm. um, boxing is always boxing this year has been the, the been the main focus and jujitsu. I'm actually going to compete in the Nogi Worlds in December um, after I fight. So I've really been sharp- sharpening my jujitsu game and um, and boxing game. You know, just to complement what I what I can bring into the MMA cage. Why do you think that the Arizona mixed martial arts heavyweight guys don't want to work with you? We don't. Well, there's not many of us. And then, sure. um, you know, the main one being Ryan Bader, he's the champ. I'm number five. And we yeah. work together and he helped me out through the beginning of my career a lot. Like I can't take away what that man did for me at the beginning because he allowed me to come into his space three times a week, knowing that I was pushing to, you know, get to where he's at. And, um, you know, I, I, it made perfect sense. He sat me down and told me, hey, man, you know, you're moving up the ranks and we could be fighting here soon. I can't, you know, you can't, we can't be spark, uh, training like this anymore. And I totally respect that. You know what I mean? And that, it makes perfect sense. You know, you, this is your job just like it is mine. I wouldn't want to keep showing this guy, this young guy coming the up. Moves. These, yeah. The moves, yeah. The moves and the skills. <laughs> and I'm getting, I was, you know, I'm getting better by by training with you. So I'm only get. it's only brings that familiar, familiar, blah, blah, blah. Familiar, familiar, familiarity. I got you. I got you. You know, when it, when we step into the cage, so I think that's what he wanted to break that off. You know, just because of that, you don't want this to be too familiar and me to feel too comfortable stepping in there with him. Completely. Now, obviously, not to look past Daniel James in any way, shape, and form, but how would you envision a fight between yourself and Ryan Bader going? I think I would uh, get the. I think I would get the win. Think you get on, the on, W on, these days? <laughs> yes, I think I would get the W these days. But he would. I think he would. He would be the biggest challenge that I've had to face. Right. By far. I love it. Now to change gears a little bit, I was curious who runs your dog Oso's Instagram. Is that you or is that somebody else? <laughs> that, that's that's me. I, I do a horrible <laughs> job. Just just as you can see with my Instagram, I am. I'm actually. I'm looking for a social media person that I don't want to run my Instagram account at all. Sure. I am so fucking done with social media. I am done with our society, period, really. <laughs> like, I don't know what, I'm scared to where the fuck we're moving towards. And I don't like the bullshit that gets pushed through social media. Like, and, and then and if you watch, you know, you see my page, it's mostly like me reposting funny videos. Like I, for me, social media is pure entertainment. I don't look at it, I don't take it too serious. I think people now are taking social media way too serious. You know, like you have people getting canceled because of what they say and how they feel. It's an opinion. Everybody and, is allowed yeah. to have an opinion like an asshole. You know what I'm saying? And who fucking cares? You know, like who cares if Kanye West thinks this or thinks that? It's one fucking person. Exactly. And it's his opinion. You know what I'm saying? And, and to me, what doesn't make sense is like the same people who are tearing him down for his opinion are the same people who made make people feel that his opinion means so fucking much. Right. They build them up and then they, they tear him down. Yeah. It's this they entire, build. yeah. It's a fucking game. He's a he's a, a rapper and a, a clothes designer. Who fucking cares what his uh, opinion is going through, on anything yeah, else? Going through a divorce. On, like, he's yeah. clearly not doing well. Right. We should and stop then, asking him questions. And, and all this shit. <laughs> like, we know he has mental problems, but yet we set him up just to say he's a fucked up. Like, it doesn't, it to me, and then it's like all this... It, it, it's all a, this, it's, yeah, it's unnecessary all this, conflict. It's unnecessary yeah, conflict. Unnecessary, yeah. and, it, and it makes no sense to me. And that's what I look at. And I'm like, social media is another tool for the government to use misdirection. Hey, sure. focus on this stupid shit, this individual who doesn't mean anything, doesn't make any sense. But let's focus on that so you're not looking at really what we're doing. You know right. what I'm saying? And I think that's what our society has become so much with the news. You know, to me, I always tell people if our news outlets were held more accountable for the, the information that they give us and were, were liable for the information they give us, our, our society would change. Yeah. If we were given, the, if, we, if, if they had no choice but to release the full story with no with no uh, embellishing or agenda, yeah, yeah agenda it was just involved, the facts, just the sure. facts. We'd see a completely different a completely different society. Our, we would be so different. Uh, even now, I was just thinking like yesterday. I was talking to my friends, and I was saying, you know, if you wanted to change this, if we really wanted a true democracy, voting should be public. As right. soon as you go through the booth and you put your vote in, it should pop up on a screen. This, this is who voted you for voted this. for. This exactly. is who you voted yeah. for. And we can calculate it right then and there from every fucking state where you voted from. And then if you can see your name, you see, oh, that's exactly who I voted for. That's that's who I vote. Now there's no yeah. dispute. 
Now you can't say there's no, how, how are you going to put fake people in there? You know what I mean? If it's public, but the fact yeah. that it's private gives the opportunity for bullshit to happen. Completely. And that's where I, and, and that's where I think like something simple like that is, uh, is where people want to say, oh, we need the privacy of your vote. Why? Why? When we have social media and everybody's spitting their fucking opinion anyway and getting judged, getting canceled if, if we don't agree with it. So why, why not just put the voting public? So yeah. then, then you then we don't have those discrepancies anymore. But because because that takes away the opportunity for the bullshit to come in, it will never happen. We won't have a public public voting, you know what I mean, set up like that. So I don't know. It's, it's you know what I'm hearing, Tyrell. It's it sounds like Fortune 2024. We got to get you nah, nah, <laughs> on a nah. stage. Come on, nah, we I'm, make I'm a reserving, run for the top. I'm reser I'm holding back so much of what I say now <laughs> because just being an athlete. And, and even having an opinion that someone may not like that's in a position to scrutinize me will, will demolish It's the same thing. They'll, they'll throw it back at you. It's a lose-lose right. lose position to be in. Right. Completely. So I'd rather, I'd rather not even give my opinion and don't say, say much on shit because I don't, I don't need that. You know what I mean? And I'm yeah. not the person that, that wants that, that spotlight on, on because of my opinion is this or that. I don't give a fuck. I don't care what people think. I don't, I don't care what people think about me. I, you know what I mean? So it's not, it's not something I'm into. We'll talk about spotlight of things you are into. Bellator 288. How are you going to get it done? Tell me how it goes down against Daniel James. What can we expect from Tyrell Fortune? Same thing I gave to Rakim Cleveland. Me going out there looking for a finish quick. Um, I think I can put the pressure on this guy and make him make a mistake and capitalize on it and put him out. So it. that's, a, that's exactly what I'm looking to do. The number five ranked Tyrell Fortune. Thank you so much for the time. I truly appreciate it, man. And we'll definitely talk soon. Yes, thank you again.